So I'm going to start off by using a little Indian yellow and I'm going to block in. So today what I'm working on is this little bouquet of flowers here and I've got a reference photo out in front of me of them that I'm that I'm painting from and I'm going to give you a copy. I'm going to give you a copy of it too. So I'm just going to start off by kind of getting this wherever the bouquet is. I'm going to kind of put in some of this Indian yellow and I'm going to get in some of this sap green. Put in some of that. This is going to be like a really loose kind of ad lib style painting where I just kind of go for it. I'm going to add a little transparent brown oxide in there because that sap is kind of bright. Then I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue with some of that transparent brown oxide and I'm just going to get that sort of wash going around it. I didn't want to block in the background until I kind of marked off where those bright yellows were going to go. But you can do it either way. You can start off with the background and wipe away your background. So now I'm just going to um, kind of wipe away. because that's a very big brush. It um, holds a lot of paint. So I've got a lot of, that's just some turp I was using. So painting on this thick canvas. So sometimes I'll just take that extra paint and go around the edges like this just to use it up a bit. And later, then I don't have so much to paint. And this is a, this is an eight by eight canvas. And I'm just gonna kind of use that. This is a Viva paper towel. I'm just gonna use that and kind of wipe away some of that. So now you've got something at least on there. It's not so tricky. And then I'm gonna go and kind of mark out where my flowers are going. And um, for those of you who are watching this um, and you're not a member of my Patreon channel, my Patreon channel, you get a copy of the whole length video and you get um, all the reference photos and you get help. Um, so if you need help, you can always um, drop me an email and, um, you know, just let me know what you are stuck on and I can help you get through your painting. And so you can always, you can always send me like a photo of where you're stuck. That's what some people do. And then I, I help people get through the, just some, whatever's, you know, holding you back. So there's a little bit of the vase. And so I want it to be really kind of loose. So I'm just leaving it like that for now. And then I'm going to, I'm using a glass palette so I can wipe off the extra paint here. All right. So now I'm going to start the fun, the fun stuff. So I've got, I'm going to go for a little larger brush, but not as big as what I was using. So maybe something like this six flat Princeton Summit. And I'm going to get a little bit of this transparent brown oxide. And I want to look at my reference photo. Also, for those of you who are on my Patreon channel, um, you know that um, when I edit the videos, I always try to put the the reference photo in the corner of the video so you can kind of always see it while, while you're watching. But it's better than an art class when you're standing around trying to peer over one another to see anything. I used to, used to stand and you'd be in the back of a classroom trying to see what the teacher was painting from way, way back. And now you can 
you can watch it online. So I'm mixing in some of the sap. I'm just kind of marking in some of those little branch stem kind of shapes. And I know it's hard to kind of do this. It's it's kind of a challenge to just block in versus I know when when I teach new beginners they want to control more where everything's going. So they want to draw every stem and then like every little leaf. But it saves you a lot of time and it gives you a looser painting if you can sort of just block in and look at the reference photo and just sort of block in some of those, those um, just the main kind of colors and where they all kind of head. So I can see clearly there's a lot of green in this area. So I'll just kind of block that in and then I'll, I'll even wipe away some of it to make stems so you can get sort of that transparent kind of effect. And here too, I'll sort of wipe away some of it too. So I use these Viva paper towels because they're really smooth. And then I'll get my brush and I'm just going to block in now some of the, the sunflower. So I'm going to use this cad yellow and I'll mix a little bit of this Indian yellow in there. And I just have a tiny bit of turp, just that gamsol. And I'm just going to mark in kind of where the sunflower is. And I like all these colors around because they add that darker value to the, the petals that I need and they don't muck up the colors. So they're all very, at this point, this is the first opaque color I've added, which means it's the first color that has, you know, white mixed into it. Everything else so far has been transparent. So I'm just kind of blocking in can add a little bit of that transparent brown oxide just to get some of that dark in there. Even some of that, actually that red oxide gives it a nice deep color. And oh, the whole um, idea is to keep it loose. And then while I'm up there, I'll block in that same color with these um, daisies get some of them in there. And again, just look at look at everything more as uh, a shape versus having to, you know, get everything as a, if you look at it as just shapes of, and color, you'll, you'll end up with a better painting if you're over, try to overkill all the different, um, it's hard to describe, but if you if you kind of go at it more that way, like shapes and values, and just looking at it from that perspective, you'll get a looser feeling painting. And if you're like talking about the shapes as like, oh well, that's a leaf or that's a petal, it engages the kind of the wrong side of your brain. It's hard to understand, but you want to get your brain into the zone where it's not so logical. And there's some white flowers in there too. So I'm gonna get some of that white and mix some transparent brown oxide and a little bit of that yellow in there and just get sort of a uh, Got a little cobalt just to kind of make a like a grayish grayish white and you can put some of those white flowers in there they're like they're snapdragons and again they're they're part of the bouquet and but we don't need to make them exact we can give that whole snapdragon 
we can kind of get the feel of them without getting too detailed. And then for the tin, I use uh, cobalt blue and a little bit of this red uh, transparent red oxide. And I'll use a little bit of white. Get sort of that. Dark silver color. You can also do it with cobalt and a little bit of orange. You can get the, the basis for that. So I'm going to go and put that in there. 